So how did people move around town when the town was first built? That was a challenge because the railroad, the Santa Fe, was so far south of the town site. Two individual street railway companies, one called the Monrovia Street Railway, and the other, the Myrtle Street Railway, were organized early in 1887. The Myrtle Street Railway was headed up by William Monroe and friends, and the Myrtle Street Railway was headed up by Lewis Bradbury and friends and associates. The Monrovia Street Railway started at the Southern, <coughs> pardon me, Santa Fe tracks, and was projected to build, be built up Magnolia to Lemon, make a right turn on Lemon, head east two blocks to Myrtle Avenue, and then make a left turn and head north on Myrtle Avenue. At least that was the projection. And that appears on the 1887 map of Monrovia. Whether those tracks are ever actually built or not is a matter of speculation because they went out of business and their early interests were absorbed by the Myrtle Street Railway. The Myrtle Street Railway actually completed their line. It began at the Santa Fe, went north on Myrtle Avenue to Lemon, and it made a right turn on Lemon so it would go but it would go next to the Grandview Hotel. And then again, on that 1887 map, it shows it making a left turn on Ivy and heading north to Foothill. And again, don't know if it actually happened. That may have been speculation on the part of the map maker or what the, they said they were going to do, and it may not have happened. The Myrtle Street Railway operated independently until it was purchased by Leonidas Barnes. The date given is in Dick Singer's carefully researched book is 1896. So Leonidas Barnes got out of the general store business and operated that streetcar railway. Later maps like the 1904 map show it continuing east on Lemon several blocks. And that made sense because Leonidas Barnes, in 1905 or thereabouts, built a house for himself and his wife at 216 East Lemon. And my understanding is he probably just pulled the streetcar up in front of his house at night, unhitched the horses, and let it sit there overnight, unless it was Halloween, in which case he might have nailed it to something. Anyway. I remember his barn. It was there until the late 1940s. It's a great big old-fashioned barn on the alley between Lemon and Colorado. Never been painted, dry as a bucket. All it took would have taken would be a match tossed judiciously, but it was still there, and that's where he housed the horses that pulled the street down the railway. Uh, the railway was ultimately purchased by the Pacific Electric. In fact, I think there are pictures of it identified as part of the Pacific Electric System. I wish I could find it now, but I stumbled across an account where Leonidas Barnes was instructed to take the car, a streetcar, to the intersection of Myrtle and Olive and leave it there. And the next morning, it was gone. The Pacific Electric had spirited the thing away and it got her cover of darkness because they had no intention of having it operate anymore. So that's what happened to the car. And there was even a little something published in the local paper about where is our streetcar? Anyway, that was the last, and this would have been maybe not 19, <clears throat> pardon me, 13 or 14. And that brought, that was the end of about, what, 25 years or so of local streetcar. By that time, the Pacific Electric was, had been operating for at least 10 years. So if people needed to get east and west, and into downtown Los Angeles, that would have been their primary mode of transportation rather than the Santa Fe. And if they arrived in Monrovia on the Santa Fe, they would have simply have had to call a taxi and got been transported up to downtown Monrovia from the depot that way rather than the little railroad car. So the streetcar was pulled by mules? Mules and I think later on horses, but yeah, I don't know when the transition took place. I believe initially it was mules. And the cars were equipped with a little cart on the rear. 
that allowed the mules to be unharnessed at the top of the line, taken around and back, and loaded up on the cart itself, where they got the opportunity to ride on the southbound trip because the elevation was such the car would roll along on its own and didn't need any need to be pulled. And there was a famous story about the car going too fast around a curve and the mules were tossed over or at least jostled and they were not willing to drive from or drive pull the car from then on. The other story is that they were <clears throat> sold to an orange grower in Dewarty who was going to use them to plow his orange grove. And someone, a neighbor said, how's the team of mules working out? And he said, well, they're fine going across the orange grove, but when it comes time to turn around and head back, they want me to carry them. So the car served a very useful purpose. The surviving line served a very useful purpose for, as I say, about 25 years. Lots of pictures of it on Myrtle Avenue, some of it northbound with the mules pulling, some southbound with the mules and back. Later on, they would put a canvas curtain so the passengers could ride in the shade if it was a sunny day. So it served a very useful purpose. And we have some pictures of them in the Legacy Collection where they're advertising a A.E. Cronenwood, jeweler, Monrovia, and Azusa. And the La Vista Grand Hotel. La Vista Grande Hotel, yeah. I don't think anyone ever determined what actually happened to the surviving car. It was probably scrapped by the Pacific Electric. Upland, city of Upland, had a similar, and I think one of those cars may have survived. But as far as I know, no trace of the Norway's early street railroads.